This is Kevin Collins with Home Theater Forum at day three of Cedia. We're here with another Kevin with uh, Screen Goo. Hello, Kevin. Hello. Uh, a lot of our members are like to do stuff on their own, and when Adam and I were walking around, we saw this whole concept of I can paint the screen on my wall, and thought that was pretty interesting. So we wanted to have you kind of walk walk our members through what your product is and how they would apply it and kind of how much it costs, and then show us some of the demonstrations that you have here in the booth. Sure. Well, what we've done is we've created a line of water-based acrylic coatings that you can use to create a projection screen in your home. You can roll it directly onto drywall, any flat, smooth, paintable surface, and create a very high-quality projection screen. Is there any special treatment that our readers or members would need to do before they put the paint on the wall? What they really want to be sure of is that their wall is flat to start with. That's, that's an important consideration. Um, if there is any texture on the wall, it's a good idea to have a seat where you plan to be in the context of your, of your home theater. Shine a bright light on the wall and have a look at it. If you can see texture, then you're going to have to take some remedial action to improve that before applying goo. If you can't see texture, you're good to go. What, what do you recommend uh, for the remedial action to uh, sand, just sand the paint down? Or? You, can, you, you want to sand it down smooth. If you, uh, if, if you have access to a, to, a, to a drywall contractor, they can put a skim coat, a smooth skim coat on for you as well. Uh, it, it really depends on how much texture there is to deal with. Okay, great. What types of, um, so everything is, does it come in a paint can or is it spray? How do people it, apply it? It does. We sell, for, for front projection applications, and that's what we're assuming most folks at home are going to be doing, we have a two-part system. We have a very highly reflective undercoat paint. That's applied first, and we recommend applying two coats of that, followed by a semi-translucent diffusive finish coat. Recommended application is two coats of that. So what our users are actually doing is creating a four-layer laminated depth screen. Wow. And is there, when they do this, in the in, in actual projection screens, you know, you have your different gain ratios and stuff like that, yeah. and there's pros and cons. What what types of gains do you offer in your paints? Well, we're, we're sort of... Uh, we don't really like to talk about gain all that much, but what we're doing in, what we're doing in our case is our reference white coating is a unity gain. It's a 1.0 gain. We have higher contrast coatings to help preserve black level and help preserve contrast in less than ideal lighting conditions. Those are lower gain. So we're talking about approximately 0.9 for our, um, for our high contrast gray, 0.75 to 0.8 for our max, for our max contrast gray. Um, I think it's important for folks to understand that gain isn't necessarily a benefit. Gain is a was a necessary evil when projectors had very little light output and light, put light output was very expensive um, because there are drawbacks to it. A screen that has gain, by definition, does not produce a uniform image. You have a hot spot. The image will be brighter in the center than it is out to the corners. We also have issues with, uh, with color shift off axis and with, um, with uh, drop offs in light output off axis. Excellent. Do you have any samples here you could show us of the? I'll show you the three main front projection surfaces here. This is our reference white surface, and I apologize for the conditions if the cameras are picking this up. They're pretty scuffed up after the show. But that's, that's a 6,500 degree Kelvin white surface. You can calibrate your camera with this. And this has the four layers it does. on it? And these are, rolled, these are all rolled applications as well. So any, anybody could make exactly these sample boards. This is our high contrast gray. Let's actually hold these up together so folks can see the difference between them. A, a max contrast gray. Now what, what a lot of people don't realize about projection surfaces and about projection in general, there's been a lot of talk recently about extremely high contrast ratios and folks are, I think are under the impression that if they have a really high contrast ratio number they're going to get good black level even if they're in, in high ambient light conditions, much like we're standing in here. And unfortunately that's just not the case. This white surface, the back side of the material that we coat to make our samples with, in these lighting conditions, that's the black level of a projected image. The projector cannot take light away from this surface. This is as dark as it's going to get, so all a projector can do is be brighter than this. So obviously we have a compromise in black level if we try and use a white surface in high ambient light conditions. That's why we make these darker surfaces. And what happens, so you can see here, I'm not sure how much the camera will see, but in, in spite of uh, very high ambient light levels here, we have a very nice black level in this image. We're still able to preserve shadow detail. 
conventional wisdom would say go for a gain surface, but that's not going to help with black level. No, exactly. It's, yep. it's the same 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 idea just for regular screens too. Exactly. If we uh, if we walk around, maybe we can see these are you're doing a rear projection. You just kind of build a frame and paint it over it, right? Well, we are. Yeah, we have a couple of different applications here for our rear projection coatings. The first one that we're looking at here is actually what's called a partial pass mirror. This is a mylar film stretched on an aluminum frame that has a mirror coating on the other side. So if you want to move the camera around, what I'm going to do is I'll block the light. You can see that this is actually a mirror when it's not a projection screen. Oh, wow. so projection surface and a mirror. That's great. Can you uh, do it one more time? That's something. So you could almost use this uh, in your uh, bathroom or... Absolutely. That's, that's something. Great. Now you... Uh, on this side, on this side we have a piece of standard eighth inch plexiglass that we've also coated with our screen goo, with our screen goo rear projection coating. Potential applications for this, we've, we've, we've had folks um, make backyard screens, backyard movie systems. So just cut a hole in the pool cabana wall or in a garage wall, mount the projector inside, project from the, uh, from the backside. All of the projection elements are protected from the, uh, or all the projection hardware is protected from the elements, and but you have a great picture, uh, a great picture outdoors. What's the difference in the compound for rear projection versus? Uh, is it a different product you buy? It is. Yeah, the, the rear projection coating is is a specific product. Um, we very cleverly named it rear projection, just so that there wouldn't be any confusion. Um, the difference between it and the convention and our and our conventional product is this is less reflective and more diffusive. This is a purely diffusive surface. And one of the things you'll see if you walk around the camera a little bit is the off-axis of this is terrific. A lot of rear projection screens are lenticular in nature. They're doing essentially what, what a gain surface does. But it, it means that the viewing angles are very limited, which is obviously not the case with this uh, with, with this. Now you had another thing that we kind of want to take a picture of, and that was the uh, front projection. So yeah. that's in the dark room over here. Well, this is this is an example of our max contrast uh, front projection coating. In this instance, it's applied to an artist canvas because we're at a trade show, and it's a lot easier to ship an artist canvas around than it is drywall or a cinder block wall, or anything along those lines. Uh, we obviously have a, a terrific image, lots of depth and dimensionality, and it's very, very cost effective. To make an image up to 92 inches diagonal at home, a user can buy two 500 milliliter cans of paint, the reflective undercoat and the diffusive finish coat, and the retail price of $115 is all it takes and a, and a, little, bit of, uh, a little bit of sweat equity to make a really terrific projection screen. So if, you, if we kind of broke that down into like a, a seven foot wide screen or something, the 16 by 9, what would be the cost if we we're going to put it on a wall for a front projection? Um, well, the 92 inches diagonal in a 16 9 is approximately 25 square feet, and that would be our entry level, our smallest size. Next step up is to 1,000 milliliters, and for our U.S. listeners, that's approximately a quart, a little bit more. Um, 100, uh, 130 inches diagonal is, is sorry, 50, 50 square feet translates to about 130 inches diagonal. Great. Where would... Uh DIY people or people that want to do this themselves purchase your product at? Um, they can purchase it online through a number of vendors. If they visit our website, ScreenGooAmericas.com, and click on the How to Buy link, um, they'll, they'll, see a, they'll see a number of resellers. It's also available through Sherwin-Williams stores in the U.S. Great. Well, thanks, Kevin. Do you have any other uh, things to tell us here about ScreenGoo? Um, not, not really, actually. I think, uh, I think we've been very thorough, and uh, I, I appreciate, uh, appreciate you stopping by to, uh, to hear what we have to say. Well, great. We'll see you next year, hopefully. Terrific.